I start to pivot a bit faster. Yeah. It's all of your expansion, this noise. And basically, yes, I have some everywhere now. <laughs> this is what uh, Vincent Dezotti has been doing for three years, following also the PhD <laughs> of uh, Marie-Julie some years ago. And now we have a new PhD student working on this problem. And uh, I'm doing that with Loïc Vanel uh, at ELM and uh, Pierre-Philippe Corté in Paris. So, as I told you, this is an everyday life experiment. And you have, uh, all of you have experienced this uh, annoying sound, and which is a signature of a mechanical instability. Typically, the detachment front advances by steps, by jumps, or by jerks for some. <laughs> and uh, actually, well, it I told you about this noise, and you all of you have heard it. And actually, it's a real industrial problem nowadays, still. Even though this is known for more than 50 years, <coughs> uh, nowadays, we don't have uh, good solutions to, to prevent it. And uh, actually, the noise in big uh, factories is unbearable and uh, goes beyond the level of uh, acceptable uh, uh, conditions for workers. Well, on top of that, it can damage the adhesive or pro and provoke some problems with the motors. Or eventually, it could be painful when you remove a bandage. But <laughs> 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 well, wha what, what is the origin of this, uh, this mechanical instability? Uh, this is a coupling between the elasticity of the system and the specific behavior of the glue. Actually, here I represent the, the peeling force as a function of the peeling velocity. And you have a non-monotonic -mono behavior. In particular, you have a decreasing branch here, which means that, okay, it costs less energy for the crack to advance faster and accelerate. And therefore, this is a, an unstable con uh, condition if you impose a peeling velocity in this way. And typically, the, the front will alternate, and the, the way the, the glue will detach will alternate between these two behavior. At high speed, it behaves like a glassy solid, while at uh, a low ve peeling velocity, it behaves like a viscous. Uh, liquid, let's say. <laughs> well, uh, until uh, uh, very recently, and thanks to the improvement in uh, ultra-fast imaging, uh, the way to study the stick-slip instability has been indirect, by eventually some force measurement, even though on our system it is difficult, or essentially by acoustic emissions, again, or eventually by uh, post-mortem observation. Meaning if you look at your tape after such uh, unstable uh, motion, you will see some marks that are left on the, on the tape. So this is the system we consider, uh, this uh, 3M scotch uh, tape, well, that all of you will know. And uh, it's a so-called pressure sensitive adhesive. And it is made of a soft polymeric blend, a 20 micron layer of glue, and uh, deposit on a rigid backing, which has an elastic behavior and typically 30 microns. Uh, and, okay, the problem of the, the peeling and the peeling dynamic can be formulated as a problem of fracture mechanics. In particular, the steady detachment of the adhesive can be described by a balance equation that all of you know, between the mechanical energy release rate and the fracture energy of the uh, joint substrate uh, adhesive. And, uh, well, this fracture energy takes into account all the dissipative mechanisms that are, that are occurring close to the crack tip, uh, close to the crack point. However, how, I mean, this is not, of course, valid in the stick slip regime. And this will be the main discussion about what I'm going to show you. So, as I told you, we had uh, several PhD uh, on this problem, and we have done many different types of experiments in order to show and uh, understand the limits, let me go back because I didn't want to understand the limit of the quasi-static approach. And we have observed new dynamical regimes that we now we are able to understand thanks to the work of, uh, of uh, Marie-Julie during her PhD. And basically she has worked on two different setups, peeling directly from a wall or peeling directly from a flat substrate. And this experiment was performed uh, uh, at uh, Pierre-Philippe Corté uh, in Orsay, uh, in the lab of Pierre-Philippe Corté. So here, this is one typical uh, experiment. And the, the amazing thing is that he's able to translate the substrate at the same peeling velocity 
up to four meters per second. So this is a, <laughs> a real uh, performance. And what you observe here again, this is uh, even though we are peeling at a constant impulse velocity, here we can lock the, the peeling angle and also the peel length between the motor axis and the substrate. And what you observe is jerky dynamic and those marks that I was telling you. And you see that, well, those uh, stick and slip events are really regular. And okay, I will uh, continue. Uh, I will not describe anything about that, just telling you that, okay, thanks to those experiment and the, the ability to control the peeling angle, uh, the peeling velocity and the peel length, we were able to really describe, well, here it's a typical stick-slip cycle with long periods of stick and sudden slip that are really fast. Here it's the velocity of the, of the detachment point. And we could go from such type of regime, which is really archetypal of a uh, stick-slip um, cycle, to this type of uh, velocity oscillations where you have a quasi-sinusoidal shape of the, of, of the velocity of uh, the detachment point. Uh, and this is ever controlled by the peeling angle the, or the, the velocity. Uh, and you can go, you, it evolves uh, continuously from this type of behavior to, to this one. And we can understand that perfectly now uh, by taking into account the inertia of the ribbon and well, kinetic effect. And if you want to know more, I will be glad to describe this and talk about that later af after my talk. And or you can look at the papers of Marie Julie. But well, what I want to, to focus today on, it's, uh, well, the previous uh, movie that I shown quickly, there was something at very small scales that was surprising and that we discovered during the, the PhD of Marie Julie. And this was actually the goal of uh, Vincent's work. So let me show you what we have done. Very simple experiment. We have a, a small glass plate or plexiglass plate here. And uh, here we have uh, the motor axis. We impose the peeling velocity. We have a given angle here and a given length. So look, we have been varying this peeling velocity between 0.05 meter per second up to 60 meter per second. And we are 60 meter per second just basically a wall is 30 meter, meaning that in half a second you unpeel, you unroll the, <laughs> the full <laughs> wall. <laughs> so this was a bit crazy, but typically we are peeling at uh, the meter per second, all right? And we are looking at the detachment front through, I mean, the, the whole front here at very small scale, few millimeter scale, ever in transmission through the transparent substrate, or we are looking at the profile of the tape from the side. And of course, using a high-speed camera up to 700,000 frames per second. And you will understand soon why we are using such a high frame. Well, I didn't want to show that uh, originally, but after the, the, the poster of Tetsuo, I thought that it would be good just to give you a glance on, on, on this uh, interesting aspect that uh, Vincent discovered. Actually, uh, well, this is a regular peeling, quite boring. We are looking at uh, the position of the front as a function of, uh, <laughs> of time. I mean, here it's smooth, advanced at the peel at the velocity that we impose. Nothing special. And then underneath, we have the typical stick-slip uh, behavior that uh, I'm going to focus on. But just at the onset of the stick-slip instability in between, we have, and it's Vincent who discovered that during his PhD, we have some really quasi-sinusoidal uh, oscillations. Uh, and this was not known in this uh, framework. In particular, I mean, while those uh, oscillations, um, what is funny is that it increases a bit uh, when you're peeling uh, with the peeling velocity and th their amplitude, but their period is constant. And actually, these are exactly the same type of uh, inertial dynamic that you can observe at very high velocities. So this also, I mean, we, we now understand well those uh, typical uh, velocity fluctuations, but I will not talk about that. I'm going to, to show you uh, a typical video of the a typical stick slip behavior that we have. So this is, a, is it working or oh not? Here is a typical experiment. We have a stiff event and a slip event. This is the position of the detachment front as a function of time. 
okay, in the classical stick stick behavior at macroscopic scale with uh, milliseconds thick uh, and uh, millimeter strips, all right? But, well, I'm sure you have already noticed that. You have good eyes. If you zoom within a slit, it's what you observe. You observe again a jerky dynamic that light with uh, uh, slips of 100 microns and uh, micro slip duration of uh, 10, 100 microseconds. Well, uh, and well, the funny thing is that if we, so this is what I just showed you before, we, during the slip, the macro slips, we, obs we observe microscopic stick slip events. But if you continue to increase the peeling velocity, at some point the macro instability disappears. So this is this case, here's the position of the front uh, as a function of time. Macroscopically, it's smooth. It advances at a given velocity that we impose. But if you look microscopically here, the front is advancing by those microscopic steps. Well, honestly, at the beginning, we were really surprised by this behavior first. Um, we have pushed on to understand and to characterize this, uh, this uh, those two instabilities. Because actually, the macro instability is uh, driven by the, well, the driving, the peeling velocity. But the microscopic one is not because it occurs uh, for a given impulse peeling velocity only during the slips, uh, the macro slips. So therefore, it's basically the, the, the effective peel tape velocity, which is the a control parameter of this microscopic instability. And if you look at the, uh, at the ex existence range over which those exist, they can live independently. So, so this, I mean, first of all, it's important to remind you that now, I mean, what we call actually st the, the archetypal stick, st stick slip behavior <coughs> is a mixture of those two uh, macroscopic and mm, well, micro and micro <laughs> instabilities. But both of them can live independently. Ah, well, I will stop this video and I will continue. I will show you just after. No. Yes. Actually, instead of uh, uh, of looking at uh, very high resolution and increase, I mean the um, how should I say? Just before, what I was showing you was typical. I mean, you had the front. This is the band, and I was looking at a, the region of interest was this one. In this video, what I did, well, what my originally and Vincent have been doing, it's this: you increase uh, the the scale in this direction. And you increase also the frame rate up to 700 frames per second. And actually what you discover, and what you observe, is this behavior. Actually, in, in average, the peeling point goes from top to bottom. That's what you observe. It goes micro slips, or micro stick slip event, that I was telling you before. Actually, it comes from a dynamic transverse crack. So, So again, yeah, yeah, but it can go to from uh, right to left or whatever, or even if you have some defect, it can go both ways. So this is exactly, I mean, maybe it's not clear. It's always uh, a bit surprising and puzzling, but this is what I call actually the, the you have the propagation. <sighs> Come on, what's going on? In stick slip, yeah. You have this behavior. So actually the fracture front has a, a kink, actually. So this is the mean direction of the front, propagates from top to bottom. And, but actually it is composed, it is made of those transverse. Uh, uh so instead of zero, you just have this asymmetry of the latency. Ah, the fact that it goes from one side to the other one. No, no, but it, it is, I mean, uh, changing. I mean, as I said already. Uh, during the same experiment, when it starts from one side, they basically it continues from this side. And you can have several ones propagating at the same time. Yeah, sure. So you need to tell Yes. No, 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 no. In this case, we don't move anything and we don't control in the state. We are just the pulling rate. We are looking at, I mean, typically the length of the ribbon is 50 centimeter up to one meter. We are looking at few millimeters. So basically, I mean, when we set up 
a given feeling and goal, this doesn't move. Actually, we can say that we, during the experiment, it's evolving at one percent. Exactly. Uh, well, that's it. So, and the, to the, the point is that those transverse fractu fractures goes from 650 meters up to 900 meters per second. So let's go on. What, what I told you that we are able also to visualize the, the profile of the tape from the side and exactly the same. Look, it's what we observe now. This is a stick and this is a split. And what you see, I mean, you have uh, this jerky behavior again during the split. So here I show you the profile of the ribbon shape and it goes from uh, right to left. So during the stick, it doesn't move much. <coughs> but here, I mean, you see you have clearly jumps. This corresponds to the micro slips. And what I want to insist on, and you can s already see in the previous uh, slide, is the fact that the shape is evolving during, during this micro slip. Actually, you have a jump in the ribbon curvature, meaning that you have a release of ribbon bending in it, OK? And uh, well, basically, it, it's nice. I, I like this video. It was a bit of originally a not so good uh, video of uh, Vincent. Look, actually, you, you can see, because he was not able to focus directly on profile. But actually, you see, <laughs> because of that, you see the propagation of actually the bending waves. And if you just compute, I mean, uh, the typical duration or the release of this bending energy, actually it gives you access to this character span, or if you want, the fracture kink uh, proceeds at the group velocity of those bending waves. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, <laughs> what I'm going to tell you is, okay, uh, I will go on on the characteristics of those uh, of this micro instability. And Vincent, Marie Julie, but especially Vincent, have done many, many different experiments, changing the peeling velocity, the length of the ribbon, the peeling angle. And basically, I mean, what I will show you corresponds to thousands of micro slip slip events, well, basically around 7,000. So, what we are going to look at is the amplitude of these uh, micro, micro slips, if you want, or the width of those trans transverse cracks as a function of the duration, the, the microstick period before an event, okay? So let's see what we observe. So originally, actually, we thought that this is really regular and you had a given scale. And for many years, we thought that it was really fixed by the system. Actually, I mean, Vincent, after all his uh, campaign, he could observe this. First, you have here, I sh show you the amplitude of this microstick slip as a function of this period. And what you see here, it's for a given peeling angle, uh, one backing, you will understand why, and many uh, different peeling, uh, peeling lengths. So basically, you don't see that well, this behavior is independent of L. However, what is interesting, you have an increase, a peculiar increase of this amplitude as a function of the period. You see the same if you fix the length, and here we have varied the, the peeling angle. Well, you observe the same behavior, but there is a slight dependence with the peel angle, which is really mild. Here I show the same in a log-log range, and it seems that we have this uh, scaling behavior with the scaling exponent of one third. And what you observe here is a slight dependence at small peeling angle. I emphasize on this, but just showing you for different peel angles. And here, for instance, looking at the amplitude of the micro stick slip for a given duration or a given window, you see that indeed it decreases systematically with the peeling angle. Okay? So there's it's small, but there is an effect. Well, as I showed you before, there is a, we saw that there was this micro instability is really is related to a release of the bending energy. And 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 therefore we have been uh, modifying the bending modulus or the bending stiffness of our ribbon by simply gluing with a rigid glue several backing, layers of backing. And therefore, I mean, we can increase by doing that, we can increase by uh, two orders of magnitude this uh, flexural rigidity, okay? And what you observe, okay, again, I show you the amplitude as a function of the period for several uh, backing layer. 
And what you observe is that you have a systematic increase of the amplitude of the, of the, uh, the micro-instability. Interestingly, if you look at, uh, in log-log scale, I mean, this uh, uh, scaling behavior with a one-third exponent seems to survive. So basically, it's the, the prefactor which seems to depend slightly on the um, angle and on the bending modulus of the ruban. Okay, so how can we understand that? Well, we have been working on that for quite some time, and I believe now we, uh, we could figure out a kind of scenario. So basically, what I'm telling you now is that during a micro stick, you have, okay, the, the ribbon is stretched and bent. Okay, basically, so you are stretching the glue here locally, and you are bending the ribbon, all right? But then what you say, what we have observed is that when the glue, or we will assume that, when the glue is stretched up to a critical length, critical elongation, uh, suddenly a micro slip of a given size, IMSS, will occur. And therefore, I mean, based on this uh, consideration, you can establish this local energy balance during a micro stick slip cycle, saying that the bending energy of the ribbon and the stretching energy of the glue will be released suddenly during this uh, advancement of the crack locally. And a slight uh, important, uh, 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 well, uh, uh, in this local energy balance, there is a term which is important. It's this increase of kinetic energy that the tape locally acquires. And this is important to understand the, the scaling law that we love to. Basically, this uh, local energy balance is equivalent to the, the one that Mott proposed a long time ago to describe dynamic rupture processes. So that's it. Basically, I mean, this is the excess of elastic energy that is converted into kinetic energy. Well, the point is that theoretically it has been proposed for many years, it was in it by Kelb, and we have done uh, some work with colleagues in Paris, and recently Julien Chopin and co-workers at ESPCI have shown that the energy accumulated in the deformation of the glue is fully dissipated when it detaches, saying that it controls the fracture energy of the adhesive joint substrate. And uh, therefore, we can assume that the stretching energy of the glue will be will is given by this uh, fracture energy. And therefore, in our local energy balance, you end up by to have, within the micro stick slip cycle, to have a bending to kinetic energy transfer. And I will go further in a bit faster here. Basically, by estimating those two quantities, you can relate the amplitude of the micro stick slip with the duration of the micro stick slip balance. And what is nice, well, you see it directly, you have this one third exponent, you have this prefactor that depends slightly on the, well, slightly, because there is a one over six uh, <laughs> power here, with the bending modulus, the, um, the mass of the ribbon, and the, the angle. And basically, by uh, uh, plotting the amplitude randomized by this prefactor as a function of the period, you can collapse all your data. Interestingly, and uh, I told you about this parameter, this critical elongation at which the micro slip occurs, if we fit this uh, all our data, we find a value of five micron, which is compatible with our direct side observation of the adhesive layer. And uh, what we observe also is that this type of approach, and this is not a fit, we, we, we just use the, the value that we extracted for those uh, experiments. We can describe all uh, the different experiments that we have done when we change the bending stiffness and taking into account also the increase of the mass of the ribbon. And this is the same in the log-log scale. So that's it. <laughs> I will uh, finish here by just telling you that, okay, we have unveiled new uh, dynamic regimes of the unstable filling dynamic. And in particular, you have seen two different instabilities with very different spatial temporal scales, controlling parameter, and range of existence and characteristics. The point is that for those two instabilities, kinetics, kinetic effects and inertia is crucial uh, to take into account to understand those. Well, I won't say anything about the macro one, but well, microscopically, this ma micro stick slip or this micro instability correspond to the a dynamic fracture process with the regular propagation of uh, fracture kings. And uh, 
the scenario is comes from the conversion of a bending to kinetic energy locally. However, one thing that we still don't understand it's <coughs> why the front wants to kink. The origin of the physical origin of the of the kink here, we don't understand it. And in particular, it seems that there is a velocity threshold for their appearance. And we are still working on that by doing different things with some colleagues. I will show you a nice video to conclude by looking at at the same type of process but with an infrared camera that you see that eventually during the stick behavior you have a, a rather strong increase of temperature of two degrees and therefore actually we believe that maybe thermal weakening, weakening mechanism could be relevant to explain eventually this uh, the triggering of those, uh, be of those objects I will not say much we have been working also on acoustics and I will thank you for that and if you want to have uh, more detail, you can look at the PRL that just uh, should be out now this week or soon. <laughs> and Emil, thank you for <laughs> your attention. <laughs>
occurs when the glue is stretched up to this critical elongation. I'm just saying that. And the, the value that we could observe, well, that, could mm, well, that gives, uh, the, well, the fitting within this support gives a, a five micron value. We try to measure directly the value. It's really difficult. It's uh, typically our resolution. So we do not observe, we have never observed in our experiment, larger values. So that's why I'm saying this is compatible with uh, our observation because this we cannot measure really. However, what I want to say is that at very low velocities, the, the peeling dynamic, the peeling process is very different. And there you see a really strong, um, much larger extension of the glue. And you have a very different peeling behavior with uh, the fingering instability and calibration and so on. And this is like uh, two orders of magnitude larger. This is known and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have this problem, I, 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 I talk too much indeed. <laughs> Thank you.